Romano Prodi has also served two terms as Italian Prime Minister. Well, these days he's professor at the China Europe International Business School, and he joins us live now from Bologna. Signor Prodi, thank you so much for joining us today. I wanted, first of all, to ask you what a default of Greece would actually mean for the Eurozone. Is it better now to have a co coordinated default for Greece with the country staying in the Eurozone than all of this uncertainty and volatility on the markets? Because effectively, we don't know what's coming next. Look, uh, the default of Greece is not an advantage for anybody. Clearly, Greece needs time. But if there is some sort of coordinated policy, time is given for granted. You know, the problem is that uh, there is no agreement on that. This is the eternal problem, you know, because uh, otherwise we should not have even started with the Greece problem. And today, the German vote is a great change because uh, three months ago, nobody in Germany would have never uh, uh, imagined that uh, there could be, uh, uh, could be, could be, but could be a majority in favor, yeah. in but, favor of that, you know. So Prodi, uh, the problem is that Europe is always late, it's always late, you know. And, and the problem is that, again, this vote, which we do think will pass in Germany, is also late because we're now talking about an expanded EFSF. We're talking about giving more powers. So if we get this vote, which we need, how, what can Europe do next to, to actually stop the contagion? No, but let's, let, let's be firm on that. Does Germany want the disruption of the euro? No, because when you go uh, close to the brink, when you go close to the danger, you see that the German business community understands that the euro is the strength not only of Europe but of Germany. And so the problem is the political delay on that. And so I do think that we shall go uh, um, weeks and weeks in this ups and down. This is the European tragedy. But in the end of the story, nobody wants uh, uh, on, on the le leading uh, let's say, uh, financial people mm -hmm. uh, and economic business community and also politicians. Nobody wants the disruption of the euro because Europe will be completely out of any world uh, decision. But, if but the contradiction is not to have a leadership of that, you know. But how do you take, you know, the steps? Say, c concretely, we don't have leadership, but there are still things that we could be doing Look, or we uh, could be aiming uh, for. Do we need to increase this EFSF fund? Look, we, we must arrive to a point in which we take the dimension of intervention that is enough for that. Uh, uh, we proposed a few weeks ago in this under discussion to have big new euro bonds granted by gold and networks of different states. Gold means that Germany and France put on the table more than, uh, France and Italy put on the table more than Germany. And so the German uh, uh, the German community is reassured by the fact that uh, all other states are engaged on that. And then they put networks, networks of gas, of electricity, and so on and so on. So you have uh, uh, something so big that uh, uh, give, uh, uh, give uh, uh, any insurance to the yeah. European situation. And then resources to put on building common infrastructure to avoid what you call recession that I don't no. think that there will be a recession, but, you know, the European stagnation, I mean. But, Mr. Prodi, again, if you increase, and you're absolutely right, that a lot of investors think that we need to ring fence, we need to uh, give a signal to the markets that this is under control. So you need to ring fence Greece, Italy, and Spain by possibly putting more money into the fund. The problem is that you risk a lot of the European countries losing their AAA credit rating, which at the end of the day would make the EFSF less worthwhile. Look, but the rating, if there is a strong, as you call it, ring fence, the, the rating uh, loses its own importance, you know. The clear idea is that uh, there is uh, a big wall, you know, it's big enough uh, that uh, nobody can play against it. Mm -hmm. If you play against one country per day, you know, and then there is uh, there is a, a, a Europe in disarray. 
if they think that uh, Germany, France, Italy, they make each one their role, and this is uh, divided equ equally, and not only Germany, of course, mm -hmm. as we propose with uh, gold and with other assets uh, to put in it. Uh, the speculation will go down, you know, it's clearly that uh, nobody will play against a big giant because otherwise people play against the dollar because the, the, the American budget is much weaker than the euro budget put, put together. This is so, the absurd is that the strong part is weak and the weak yeah. part is strong. But so has Europe actually been too quick to bail out the banks when it should have focused on its member states? Or are you concerned that actually we're still facing another renewed banking crisis? We talk about bigger haircuts, we talk about still the money markets. There's a real danger that they will freeze like back in 2008 when Lehman Brothers collapsed. Of course, you know, because how can you divide now the public system, the budget system and the banking situation when the banks, they have, uh, you know, they have in their stomach such a huge amount of bonds. I, I, I don't make any distinction, you know, it's, uh, from the point of view of the financial stability, it's the same thing. And so what will the ECB have to do if, if you talk, if you see, are, are you telling me that you actually see another crisis for the European banking system? No, I, I, I see that uh, they heavily depend on the stability of the public budget system. And so <laughs> I don't, uh, in terms of forecasts, uh, I don't distinguish, you know, uh, bank, a crisis of the bank system from a crisis of, uh, let's say, the budget, European budget uh, country systems, because they are linked together. But, you know, I think that we have all, all, all the possibility to build this wall. You need only a political will. This political will comes only when we are close to the tragedy yeah. because of <laughs> the difficulties that we have. And so we are in this painful period. But, but I don't think that, uh, that, that this, this, in the end of the story, uh, this remedy must be taken, you know, because there is uh, objectively no interest to put a euro in this array. Uh, but how, for example, so what role does the ECB have to play in all of this, and how will an ECB under Mario Draghi differ from what it's been um, under Jean-Claude Trichet, and will he steer it away from, from the Bundesbank stance? Uh, look, uh, the role of ECB, uh, or European Central Bank is limited, you know. You can say there will be a draggy policy zone. Uh, they have a, a restricted, important role. The problem now is a problem of governments, you know. is a problem that, uh, you know, if uh, France and Germany don't understand that there, uh, there is a you know, a, a necessity of changing. There is no EC bank, a European Central Bank that can do, can do anything. You know, the problem is, is, is politics. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is not. When the euro was done, you know, the European said, the, 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 the bankers of, of Europe, you know, the, the, the central banks of Europe, they were following the idea and the push of, of, of call of, 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 the, of the Minister of Finance, of myself, Champi, and the others, you know. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, so, uh, uh, I don't think that Draghi has a, such a higher degree of freedom compared to, 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 to what Trichet has now. Uh, very interesting analysis. Uh, thank you again for joining us, Mr. Romano Prodi, the professor at uh, China Europe International Business School, of course, former president of the European Commission and former prime minister of Italy.